All right, fire away. So is that the scrimmage at the end? Is competitive part of, most most competitive part of practice, or is that? I don't know. I can't give away my secrets. Yeah. Um, no, it's just it's just the end of practice, and you know, every once in a while, we like to finish like that. And we're trying to get our young guys as many reps as we can. Is that something you turn to more uh, often? Uh, or, I think Nate suggested something like maybe uh, you know get the starters more rest as the season goes on. Nate's been suggesting no, 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 no. We were just, I asked him about it. I said, does this, thing, does this sort of uh, thing happen? Well, more? listen, listen. I know Matt Enzer gives me basketball suggestions, but I haven't had him from Nate no. yet. So no, that's not what I mean. I just meant like you know as the season goes on, do you do you have these things more often so the other guys? Well, I mean, listen, we 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 we're practicing. I mean, we practice Monday, we practice Tuesday. We practice Wednesday, you know, and at the end, you know, I mean, once I feel comfortable that those veterans have, you know, the plan and what we want to do, you know, I like to get the younger guys some live reps. It's nothing more tricky than that. We're going to have, like, kind of a short turnaround between Thursday, Saturday games the rest of the way here. Is there any, do you look ahead to keeping guys fresh for Saturday while you're doing the Thursday game, if at any point? Like... I mean, yeah, guys, you're asking me crazy hypothetical questions. I'm going to beat you down. And if I have to play guys 40 minutes to beat you dead, they're going to play 40 minutes. And then we'll figure out how to play Washington State. I mean, I, I don't, I don't, you guys are overestimating how smart I actually am not. Because uh, we're just going to try to beat you dead. There's no, no looking forward, there's no thinking if I can rest guys, not rest guys. I mean, as it plays out, we'll make those decisions. How unique is UW in the sense that they're probably going to play UW for 40 minutes? Well, yeah, you just don't see that anymore. And, and you know, they have a commitment to it. And, you know, Coach Hop is, you know, one of the few guys that probably really, really know how to coach it. So, you know, you, you see zones, a few possessions here and there through over the course of the preseason. And for the most part, I mean, we, I, don't, I don't think we played a zone-heavy team yet. And, you know, those teams probably don't have the conviction that uh, Washington has, where they know, you know, I mean, how to adjust over the course of a game with what you're running and, you know, take certain things away. So they do a great job of it. And uh, I mean, I've always appreciated playing against them because it, it really it makes challenges your team and then makes you challenge you as a coach where you've you got to, like, help put your team in the right place. How with much that being said, there's probably a, a benefit of having the, the two big lineup against the zone. I mean, yeah. I mean, for the way we play, I think there's always a benefit of having two big lineup. I mean, you know. Um, for sure. I mean, we, we love to attack inside out, and I don't care what defense we're playing against. We want to attack inside out. How much of a learning curve is it for the new guys that may not have faced so much zone? Yeah, I mean, that, that's it. I mean, you know, we, we worked on it, and obviously we've been working on it for a while, and you work on it, you know, over the course of an entire season. I mean, you don't just start it on Monday before you play at UW. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but, but that being said, there's no guarantees on – you know how they're going to react or how it's going to work. So it's just something you'll have to monitor uh, over, monitor over the course of the game to see how comfortable guys are. How did Kerr get to be the rep? Did you make him that? No, he just volunteered. I think we I think we found something. I think we know it. Maybe long term, I think he's got a lot of potential as a rep. Do you want to compare him to current Pac-12 refs? No, not at all. <laughs> not at all. And I don't think they want that either. <laughs> Henry gave him a solid B plus. So oh wow! Well, that right must be. There. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, we'll have to see. I'm gonna have to, I'll have to take a look at the film today and sit down and evaluate his performance. Uh, but you know, he, he's not short of confidence with the whistle in his mouth for sure. When it's you look at Henry now, and you imagine him a month from now, how much of a difference do you think he'll be this season? Well, I mean, he needs to keep trending in the direction he is. I mean, he, he's really coming on, and you know, you you know, obviously we knew Henry had some talent. And, um, you know, but you just don't know how quickly it's, it's going to show itself. And I, I think it's starting to show itself. And, you know, he's still not maybe putting up huge numbers yet. But, uh, but just the general feel of him on the court and his overall effort and just kind of the, the balance and the force he's starting to play with, it's, it's really sticking out to me. So I, I feel good where he's at. But, um, you know, we need to keep pushing him to get where we need to go. How does the zone get different for Washington with the seven-footer shot blocker in the middle? Does well, yeah, it, it makes it harder it? for sure. I mean, anytime you have a legitimate, you know, goalie at the at the back at the end of your defense, I mean, it makes it hard. I mean, you could run a great play, and next thing you know, you're you're shooting over a seven-footer. And you know, I think that's you know one of the secrets of uh, you know Arizona State's success right now. I mean, that kid, you know, in the back line of their defense, you know, is, is tough to play against. And you know, and Washington has that in the end. You know, they really had it when they had Kepman going. It's unfortunate for them that he got injured because they had a legitimate two seven-footers in there that, that, that were creating problems. Tommy, the NCAA committee, there was a report that came out that they're recommending expanding the NCAA tournaments by about 25%, leading to as high as 90 teams in each tournament. What are your thoughts on that? My thoughts are I want to be in the first 65. Well, I mean, whatever they do, they can do. 
I want to have a team and a program that's in the first 65. I don't, I don't want to be 66 through 90. So, I mean, I really haven't spent any time thinking about it at all because it's probably so far coming from to fruition that I don't, I don't need to be wasting my time on that. How comfortable do you think Umar is against a 2-3 defense? I mean, hopefully real comfortable. I mean, he's, uh, you know, he's, he's an experienced college basketball player now, and, uh, you know, he played against some zone a lot last year. So, uh, you know, I, I think he'll do well. What, did you, I don't know if you've watched that Monday night game or, or heard about it, just you know, as a coach, when you see somebody go down like that, or, you know. Yeah, I mean, you, it's, it's heartbreaking. You know? Yeah, I mean, I, I was doing my, my coach's show. Brian and I were doing that, and we probably didn't even kind of realize what was going on. The game was kind of paused, and we were just yeah. plugging along, and Brian was checking his commercial boxes, and we were getting through the show. And, um, yeah, I mean, it's just, it's, it's just heartbreaking. What a tragedy. And, you know, it reminded me, I mean, um, you know, last, or two summers ago, you know, I was sitting in the La Paloma hotel room by myself, watching, uh, just flipped on the TV, and the, the European soccer championship were playing, and that Danish player went down. I literally was watching it live, like, and it, it, it was, it was, you know, powerful and riveting to see him go down, and a very similar situation. So, you know, I mean, I'm hoping this young guy, I hope this young guy pulls through. On a lighter note, I was just wondering, a lot of guys seem like they're. Clean shaven and shorter haircuts. No. Is that a team thing or a rule or <laughs> no rules, no rules. This I don't know. I, I just looked, I saw Dylan Anderson. I said you you look like Beavis, and you didn't even know who Beavis was. <laughs> so um, these kids are getting these. I guess I'm getting older, and the kids are getting younger. But yeah, I mean, Kerr kind of seemed like I thought maybe the mustache was some part of his look. He's got rid of that too. I can't keep up with the looks, Bruce. That's your job. So. Uh, Keon Brooks, what type of player? He, Keon's really talented. He's a very talented basketball player, and, he, and he's a great young man. And uh, you know, he's having a great season for him. And he's he definitely draws a lot of attention. And you know, this is a guy that you know is a highlight waiting to happen, and he can you know drop 20 plus points on any given night. How, how much did you get to know him? You guys looked at him, but yeah, obviously no, that transfer him. portal thing is quick. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's quick. We recruited him, and you know, he and his family came down on a visit, and. You know, they, cho they, had, they chose another path and had their reasons for doing so, and we respected that and wishing him nothing but the best of luck. Thanks, Coach. All right. All right, guys. Get you guys out of here.